So everyone can start out laying down flat on your back. And we'll begin first by raising your hands over your head and pushing your heels away from you. Doing that first thing in the morning stretch and taking a big yawn. Like, right, your arms and your legs. Whenever you're ready, bring both knees into your chest. Give a little rock side to side. Kind of rolling your back on the floor and maybe making a circle on the ground to kind of massage your back into the floor and you know maybe just observe if anything feels tight or sore and then just kind of bring that awareness into the rest of the core workout. We'll straighten out uh, one leg, doesn't matter which leg. Bring the other leg across for a spinal twist. Just briefly opening up the muscles in your lower back. Stay here just for a few breaths. Now whenever you're ready, you'll make around your back, hugging both knees into your chest. <clears throat> and then switch the sides. Straighten the other leg. Opposite knee goes across your body. Oh. Just kind of opening up that lower back. A lot of us, when we sleep, kind of wake up a little achy or sore. Some of us don't. Some of us wake up jumping out of bed, running and screaming. But usually you're five. Make your energy back again. One last time, hugging both knees into your chest. <clears throat> and then planting your heels down on the floor. I'm going to bring your hands behind your head and we'll start off with 25 crunches straight up and down. So keeping a little space between your chin and your chest. Squeezing just let your shoulder blades come up and down off the mat. You count out at your own pace, 25 crunches. Once you finish your 25, you can bring your hands underneath your bum or just either side of your hips. Uh, and we can do leg lifts. So keeping your legs straight, you're going to raise your legs up over your hips and lower them down so that they hover just above the floor. We're going to do 20 of these. If your lower back feels kind of tight for this, you can bend your knees a little bit to take the strain off and it'll still work. But in general, we want to try and keep your legs as straight as possible. Once you get to 20, bring both heels down to the ground. And we'll cross your right ankle over your left knee. And we'll bring both hands behind your head. These are called figure four crunches. So we're going to try and crunch your chin towards your shin. So both shoulder blades are coming up off the mat at the same time. Try and give as strong a squeeze as possible. So you're getting as close to your shin as you can. It should feel really difficult. And we'll do 15 of these on each side. Count them out. If these feel super easy for you, you can raise your opposite leg up in the air and make them really hard. Okay. Once you finish 15, switch sides. Same thing on the other side. If, you're, if that feels uncomfortable, you can also cross your arms over your chest and get the same benefit. We'll count out 15 reps. Whew. 
Great. Once you finish your 15, pause for a second, straighten out your legs, raise your hands over your head, stretch out your abdominal wall again. Big breath in, long exhale, and then bring your hands down by your sides. Cool. So putting your hands underneath your bone, you can straighten out both of your legs and raising your chest, uh, your shoulders off the mat with your neck extended, we're gonna do flutter kicks. So you're keeping your core really engaged and every two is one, so it's like one, two, three, we'll count to 40. Bending your knees so you can just about find your heels with your fingertips. We're going to push off your heels, raising your hips up to the ceiling, and then lower down slowly. So it's like a, a one second up, hold for a moment, and then two seconds down. We'll do 15 of these. Try and keep your knees in line with your hips. And your feet are in line with your hips as well. Once you finish those, you're going to bring your feet together and then drop your knees out to either side. So you're just letting your hips open up as wide as they can comfortably. You're going to put one hand over the other, like you're going to dive into a swimming pool, and then extend your hands along the floor, crunching up as high as you can. We're going to do 20 of these. So your arms can create a little bit of momentum to help carry you up. And that's the floor squeaking, I'm not farting. I think I have two more. Oh, okay. Too much fun. Okay, so bring your hands back underneath your hips. So what we're doing is we're doing an upper ab, lower ab, alternating sequence. So we're gonna do a vertical hip raise. So raising both feet up over your hips. We're going to use your lower abs to kick your butt up off the floor and then lower down slowly. We're going to try and get to 20 of those. Oh, I got it. This is just too fun. Okay. There we go. Try and slow the descent as much as possible. Once you get to 20, we'll cross your right ankle over your left knee again. Bring your right hand on your tummy, and your left hand goes behind your head. From here, we're going to crunch to bring your left elbow towards your right knee. Try and get as close as you can. We're going to do 15 reps on each side. Start whenever you're ready. So you're squeezing from the side of your abs, your obliques. Cool. 
Once you finish your 15, switch sides, left ankle over your right knee, left hand goes on your tummy, right hand goes behind your head, and then crunch up to twist. Try and get as close towards that knee as you can. If you can actually touch it, super duper. So still trying to maintain a little space between your chin and your chest. You're not pulling on your neck. Once you finish your 15, we're going to prepare for the ever radiant Mrs. Palmer Smith's favorite exercise. I think she calls them starfish. We call them boats. We did this last week. And I think I remember they were super duper fun. So you open up into the starfish shape and you take in a deep breath. And then on the exhale, you come up to float into a boat on your tailbone. And then you come down the same way that you came up. And we'll try and get to five of those with good form. Start whenever you're ready. Come up to balance, you hold for a moment, and then lower back down the same way, nice and even. <sighs> Start getting hard after a little while. I think I have one more. If I'm doing an extra, so be it. Okay. Delightful. And then we'll come to laying down on your side. So you can all thank Dimity for those. And if anyone ever wants to do a specific core exercise in the future, send me a message. I'll be sure to incorporate it, unless it's really horrible. So resting on one elbow, and then keeping that shoulder strong so it's like you're pushing your body away from the floor. We're going to do hip raises. So raising your hips up and down off the mat 15 times on each side. Fifteen. Fourteen. The last one. Hold it for a second. Ah, oh, good. And then switching sides. Cool. So again, that hand is pushing into the floor and you're pushing your shoulder away from the floor. So that shoulder is really strong. And if these feel really, like really hard, you can always plant a top foot to kind of give you a little hand. But otherwise, try and keep your legs stacked. Go 15 whenever you're ready. And then whenever you're done with that, we'll come on to hands and knees. So uh, someone was talking to me recently about um, tight Achilles tendon back there with poses like this. So if your Achilles tendon is kind of tight and this is putting strain on it, you can always flatten your toes. What we're going to do is reach your right arm out. So your right biceps is in line with your right ear. Push your left heel straight back behind you. And then on an exhale, connect elbow to knee and then inhale to extend. We're gonna do 10 of these. Count them out, go at your own pace, as long as you're getting good extension and making that connection underneath your body. Whenever you reach your 10th, come on down, switch sides. Reaching your left biceps out in front of you. So your uh, left biceps is in line with your left ear. Pushing your right heel straight back behind you. Take in a deep breath, and then on the exhale, connect the elbow to knee. 10 times. Let me 
finish that, we'll come into child's pose just for a second. Stretch out your lower back. Take a two minute rest. I'm kidding, it's not two minutes. It's gonna be a very, very short rest. And then whenever you feel like you've had enough, make your way onto your back. Again, we'll prepare for hollow holds. So we did this a few weeks back where you raise your hands over your head and then you're gonna exhale and raise your arms, head, and shoulders, and legs off the mat for three breaths. So it looks something like this. And then you come back down and lower softly. We're gonna to try to get to 10 of those. So start whenever you're ready and enjoy the exercise. I think I have two more. If it starts feeling difficult, just remind yourself that you're a lot stronger than you think you are. Too much fun. Oh, okay. When we're done with that, we're gonna come back on your side, resting on your form. We're gonna do rib rates. So we're gonna stack yourself up and you hold this position. You take your bottom arm or your top arm and you reach underneath you, try and grab your back, rake your hand across your ribs until your hand ends up towards the ceiling and then come back and repeat. We'll do 10 on each side. Once you finish your 10, switch sides. So same deal, the arm that's on the floor, you're keeping your shoulder really strong so you're not collapsing down. You're not like lounging. You're doing a solid oblique exercise. So we'll do 10 on the other side. Once you finish those, we're going to do, uh, I don't know what they're called, clamshells. It's where you straighten out your legs and start out over your head. And then we're going to crunch your elbows to your knees in one movement. So it looks something like this. And then you finish with your hands just above the floor and feet above the floor. We'll try and get to 15 of these. Start whenever you're ready. Laying on your back, creating a tabletop with your shins. 
we're going to press your hands into your thighs and your thighs into your hands. This is an isometric contraction, your deep core, okay? So imagine you have a piece of coal in the palm of your hand and you're trying to turn it into a diamond. We're going to hold this for 30 seconds, starting right now. Head can rest on the floor or be off the mat. They're both fine as long as you're really pushing, really making it as difficult as you can. And this is one where you can totally cheat if you wanted to, but don't cheat. Just make it really hard. Keep pushing really strong. You got 10 seconds left. Seven, six, five, four. Keep pushing. Three, two. Oh. Crossing your right ankle over your left knee. We're gonna do a single leg hip raise. Just putting your hands down by your sides. You're gonna lift your butt up off the floor and then lower down softly. We're just gonna do 10 on each side. It's a little counter stretch for your hip flexor and to strengthen your glutes and hamstrings. Once you finish 10, switch legs, do 10 on the other side. Start whenever you're ready. You're just trying to get a squeeze from that button hamstring to come up as high as you can until you feel a stretch in the front part of your hip. Once you're all done with that, we're going to come onto your forearms. And we're going to hold a forearm plank. So this one, palms can either face each other, like you're holding onto a, a big box of happiness, or palms can face the floor. I'd recommend palms facing the floor just because it makes it a little bit harder. So we're going to hold this for 60 seconds. If you want to start, uh, make it harder, you start right now. We're going to come on your toes. Three, two, one. And try and keep your hips uh, level with the floor so you're not jacking your hips up towards the ceiling, but they're nice and even. And you're extending the crown of your head towards the front of your room and your heels towards the back of the room. As you inhale, your rib cage expands. As you exhale, tuck your belly button in towards your spine so you got like a really tight unit. You have 30 seconds left. Nice, final 15. Everyone's doing a super duper good job. If you find your hips starting to sag, raise them up. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, and lower on down. Cool. So here we're gonna come into uh, Superman's. So arms are out in front of you. We're gonna raise your arms, legs, chest off the off the floor for three long, slow, deep breaths. We're gonna do ten of them. So coming on up, flying like Superman, breathing deep. One, two, three, and then lower them down softly. Go at your own pace. point, your back starts to feel tight, you can always rest in child's pose. One more. And 
Beautiful. Whenever you're done with that, come into child's pose, stretch out your lower back. <sighs> Slide your head and your arms rest heavy, but any strain that may have happened in your lower back just kind of ease away. And then coming up onto all fours into a neutral spine, we're gonna do cat and cow. So inhale to look up, dropping your belly down and then exhale, curving your spine to the ceiling. I'm just moving at your own breath here. Just kind of feel what has happened in your core over the last half hour and see how that changes any movement in your spine. Whenever you're ready, I'm just sitting on your butt. Oh. In the comfortable sitting position. Inhale, raising both hands up over your head. Exhale, one hand down by your side, stretching out through your obliques and your ribcage. Just reaching that top arm over your head. See if you can see the ceiling. See if you can see the floor. I mean, you should be able to see the floor. <laughs> if you can, I don't know. Uh, Yep, bigger problems and core issues. Coming back up towards center, switching sides. Getting to stretching out the opposite side. So getting into your rib cage, your obliques. See so if you can see the ceiling. Oh, up there. So you can see the floor. Fantastic. Coming up to center, both hands to the sky. Glitter fingers or jazz hands. That's it. <laughs>